I'm so blessed. Thank you, worship team. It feels so good, especially just to share the word of God. You know, when his presence has come down, and I feel the connection, you know, with you people, that the Lord is going to minister to us. It's a short topic, um, and I want us just to stay put, stay at an angle where the Lord will, is going to speak to you and minister to you at your place of work, at what you do. That thing which you do every day when you wake up, you know, when you leave church, may the Lord, you know, minister to us that we may be transformed. You know, when the Bible talks about working out our salvation with fear and trembling, it exactly means that. Our testimony must be felt in the marketplace. And we've been through the safari. Beatrice, you started, we started the safari together. Yeah, it is you. Yeah, she's... <laughs> Elder Beatrice Achari is looking behind when I, yeah. Now, we started with enter, you know, encounter, impressed. I realized Christ Jesus, you know, when I look at the life of Christ, it looks like he was going through a safari. Exactly. And I want to thank God for Sitam. Yeah. I want to thank God, you know, for such a, a, a program, you know, but we are not told much about when Christ is going through the enter. We are not told so much. Of, of course, there is something written. When he goes through, you know, the call to bond. And we see him bonding. The call to embrace. But wait a moment. When he started his engage stage. The last three years of his life. And that's the New Testament. Engage. And that is where we are. It's about how we influence. You know the choir song, I'm an influencer. It's about how we influence. That becomes more to be written of us than anything else. And I want to bless the Lord. That, that is the place we are. Thank you, our leadership. Thank you, senior pastor. Thank you, Reverend uh, Petronilla. Thank you, pastor, our pastors. Thank you, um, the elders. Even for me to get this opportunity. It's not... You know, I don't take it for granted. You just to share with us. Uh, so we are in the engage. And uh, what is the aim of this lesson? That is to inculcate a godly work ethic in the life of a believer. Our objectives, very few, three of them. We want to understand God's will about work. We want to desire to develop and expose godly values in our work. And thirdly, we want to demonstrate and then calculate a godly work ethic in all our workspaces. Now, work is God-ordained. There is a common misconception that work is a curse to humanity because of the fall that took place in the Garden of Eden. But rather, I would say, work is a blessing. Because even before God starts his project, that was his project, Eden, he was already at work. Then it cannot be. There is no way work can be a curse. Though, there is a dimension of work that comes out of the fall of man. And that is the, the difficult and tiring, what we say, the others, you know, part of work. You know, the sweating, you know, there is a certain aspect of work that is born from the fall of man. But for us, we've embraced the promise of God that he shall bless the work of our ends. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Work is a purposeful and intentional application of mental, spiritual, and physical effort or energies in order to create value for our own good and the good of others. 
God's primary assignment for Adam was to work at the Garden of Eden and take care of it. Friends, there is a garden that you are taking care of. But there are some boundaries which have been set. When you look at the scripture, Genesis 2, 8 to 9. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put man he had formed. <coughs> so we see God already at work. He's already prepared a place of work for Adam. Adam has already passed an interview to do work, to take care of the garden. God has put skills in this man to take care of the garden, to progress or to bring to progress that which God has started. And in this garden, the Lord God meant all kinds of trees to grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye. And I want you to mark that very well. Trees that were pleasing to the eye. Beautiful to behold. I believe if the Garden of Eden, it is still, it is still there. It's a physical place. You know, somewhere near in the middle of Tigris and Euphrates. Yeah, you can get the garden there. Some of those trees are still there. And some of the logs are buried down there. It's a physical place. But I believe if it was around Eldoret that the garden existed, then that could be the place to be you would book, you know, for your wedding, you know, for a nice place, you know. Uh, I'm sure WM our WM will be, you know, booking such a place to go and just behold the beauty of the Lord. And everybody else. You'll get everybody there. That was the garden. That is our God. Full of beauty. And that's going to form our discussion this day. In a short while. You know, trees that were pleasing to the and good for food. Reverend, uh, Reverend Kiprop has just announced about, you know, we are almost, we are in the harvest season in this uh, region. Because we planted plants which God has watered good for food. You know, the business of the Lord of Eden is not over. He has a people here. He has me and you. He has a farmer here. A man, a woman who is ready to follow and do what Adam was supposed to do and bring harvest to support the ministry, to support families, to support the nation, to support the earth, you know, with food. That is God. Let's see. There was something else here which the Lord did. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yeah? This is amazing. You know, man was not just left there to wander or to run up and down. No bounds to reach every corner of the garden. Eat anything. There are to be percepts. There are been to be statues. Yes, I'm giving you this garden. But there is a place of truth. There is a place of obedience. There is a place I want to test your obedience. They suppress the master, the owner of the farm, the waterer of the plants. They suppress he wants to get in touch with your heart in terms of obedience, in terms of his role, in terms of the laws of the Lord. They suppress. Wherever you work, they suppress the master wants to sit down with you and do some bit of accounts. You know, how did things, things go today? I want you to take it like that. That at the end of the day, just like the bankers do, between three and I think, I don't know the times they do, but there are times they close the doors and you know they are talking about debits and credits 
And that language is all over the place. I'm trying to see where is, where, where is, is there a shorty and, and there. Now take it exactly, let's take it like that. In everything we do, at the end of the day, he sits there, our father, our God, and asks for the books of accounts. How did the work go? How did you treat so and so? You know, a place of truth. And that is the tree. And he was told, no, this one don't touch. Knowledge of good and evil, don't touch. And if you touch, there are consequences. You will surely, surely, <laughs> that's a sure death, eh? you will surely die. I thought those were clear instructions for, any, for anybody to miss out. You know, Adam, brother Adam, uh, I, I think brother Adam should have gotten these words clearly. You know, surely die. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat of any tree in the garden, but you must not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you do that, you will surely die. A short discussion I want us to make before I continue. <clears throat> there is a question there. Uh, the mic can go on. I just want you to check a partner, somebody who can just, it's, it's going to be quite brief. I'll get one or two answers from you. Then we move on. Equal pay for equal work. Equal pay for equal work is a commonly heard statement in the culture of these days. But should all work be done for a pay? Equal pay for equal work. It's a placard everywhere. We're asking ourselves, should all work be done for a pay? Just turn to your neighbor and give each other some few nuggets. Huh? What do you think about it? Just, just feel free. Just feel free and talk. All work. Yeah, the question is there. Equal pay for equal work. <coughs> equal pay for equal work. Should all work be done for a pay? Ah, okay. Yeah. I can see my elder Maleche is really listening to Deacon. Yeah. Equal work or equal pay. <clears throat> well, that is, that's a very short cut. Time is about to elapse. I'm about to collect the papers. <clears throat> okay, let the mic move. Um, Brother Isaac. Yeah, just raise up your hand and share that. Wow, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Let's listen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm Rose Degwa. I think when we give our time to other people, we should not always be paid because we are showing godliness and would like to affect these people with what we do. And when you, that is giving somebody time, you help that person to come out of something which has uh, taken time, they cannot do anything. That's a blessing from God. Then after we have served other people, we will receive uh, something at the end. God will reward us. Wow. Let's clap. Let's clap for uh <clears throat> Mama. Yes, somebody else, one more. Gender, gender sensitivity, yeah. Uh, the moms are represented, you know, now. Dick, okay, okay. I almost chose somebody. Thank you. So when you give your time to somebody, you don't need to charge that. You are taking them out of a, a situation, eh? Yeah? Okay. Now, we have scenarios whereby work is voluntary. You talk to somebody, he comes and helps you. In such a case, there should not be any pay. But in a situation where we have a master and servant and their conditions and terms of work, that one, one is eligible to be paid. 
as per the conditions agreed upon. Thank you. Amen. <coughs> thank you. That must be Brother Abuto. Yeah, thank you, um, Abuto, for that. <laughs> wow. He's talking he's talk like a union member. <laughs> <laughs> Like he belongs to a union somewhere, yeah? Where there is an agreement, you know, the conditions must be met. That is, but he also says, there are situations where voluntary work, yeah, and mama shared the same. That's correct. That's correct, and uh, that's valid, because we might end up to a point whereby, you know, everything becomes monetary, and we lose the mark. So I concur with you. And so as we continue, uh, I don't have answers. I think we have already shared the answers with us on that question. I have heard a, of a joke, senior, in Nairobi and other places. I don't know whether the authority is working. We are just giving somebody direction. Direction. <laughs> Where is KVDA? <laughs> Turn like this. In fact, come, I take you. If he, let me take you, just know you have to. <laughs> so, Maramingi unamwambia, just nionyeshe tu, nitaenda. Because here, anakwambia, let me take you, let me take you. You, you. you know what that means. You know, there's a monetary expectation. I don't think that's the place we are supposed to be. Leave alone that to make things worse. Even prayer, where we lost it. You know, charging prayers, reverend, you know, that oil of anointing, you know, becomes a kiosk, yeah, to charge prayers. And you pay based on how many prayer points I'm giving. Or, or whether I mention one name, or two names, or you are three names. You know, one name is Kidogo. Yeah? And I just say Kiprop. You know, it's a small, but when I say Patrick Kiprop, you know, it means something else. <laughs> but, but I say, Patrick Nyambola Kiprop. You know, that one, that one you have to consult your account well. You know, you know, unfortunate, very unfortunate. But the Lord is speaking to us. This day, the Lord wants to transform us, you know, in our workplace. Now, from the trees that God planted in the garden, God's framework for the nature of our work as his people can be summarized in three. I think I've mentioned that. One is he planted trees simply for their aesthetic value, beauty. Wow, just beauty. No fruits, they are not bearing. Their leaves are flowers. I've seen plants, you know, which look like animals. The flowers look like birds. You've seen those on the... Social media, I've, I've really longed to see some of them physically. You know, wonderful. The flowers look like bells, like a bell. You know, others look and you wonder, you marvel. And that is Eden. He planted others for their nutritional value. There are trees which could give carbohydrates. He's an, God is a nutritionist. Trees which would give proteins. Others touch. Others, you know, you know those things. All that was in the garden. But don't forget this. Trees which were not to be touched or eaten. That is our God. That's how he operates. Freedom. But a place of choice based on your obedience remains there. So beauty, goodness, truth. Those are going to be our transcendentals of work in this life. Adam was assigned to work in the contest and confines of these trees we've talked about. I want us first to talk about truth very fast. Truth. Genesis 2.17 But you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. That's a serious one, friends. And at that point, you'll allow me just to take to delve a little bit and to take some time there. Adam's work in the garden was to be undergirded by obedience and the adherence to God's strict command. 
anything contrary to God's command is rebellion and wickedness. That's how God terms it. So when Adam is lured and is partaking of that fruit, the forbidden fruit, God sees it as wickedness. Yes, he is feeding him in the garden. He is enjoying the fruit, but he calls him wicked. Yes, God is feeding you. He doesn't have to stop feeding you for you to know that you have messed. He will still feed you, but he will call you rebellious and wicked. We want to conclude that our work must be guided. Those who are filling some spaces, just fill this as we discuss. That our work must be guided by a moral code. That word is moral code. Or framework of right and wrong. Good and evil. It is God who determines what is right and what is wrong. We must be ethical at our work. <coughs> Friends, allow me to pause there. Because that is where the gist is. And I'll take just a few minutes to explain something. When we talk about the moral code, the moral code has everything to do with your conscience, the, your savior, the one who has called you, just like we sing, Amenita, he has called me to serve him. Me to serve him. That is the moral code. It has to come from you. It's what I'm doing right before him. Is my conscience right? Is it clear? Or there are some, it is from you. When we talk about ethical things, it's about what our brother Abuto was talking about. The expectations of the organization you work with. You are asshole. What you do. If you are employed, there are some expectations. Are you following them? Those are ethics. But moral, this is an area I just want us to discuss, friends. Because we have to work our salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, trembling. Our engage must be written somewhere that we influenced the earth. And friends, I can give so many examples, but I ask you kindly, give yourself. I want you to think of where you work, what you do, and choose the examples you want to give yourself even as I speak. Such that you make an application to yourself. I'm talking about you. You. Please don't think of don't think about the pastor. Don't think about Elder Rono. Don't think about, you know, my brother, Kiapi. Don't think about that sister. I'm talking about you. God is just asking you to interrogate what you do daily. That which you do. Are you an influencer? How are you performing in the garden? Are there some trees, some plants, some fruits we are already eating? And they are not supposed to be eaten. Could we be deep in a cartel? In cartels that are ungodly? Could we be, you know, engulfed and mulled in clay? Unable to move, but still professing the faith? You know, those are questions I want you to ask and think about. We call it, call it secondary illumination. As I speak, a primary illumination here. Illuminate. Your area, your, your work, the lawyer, everybody, each one of us, that job you do, taking care of the home, the homemaker, just think about it. This is a key area, the moral code. Let me mention a few things, then we move on. <coughs> Part of our, our moral code should be professionalism. How professional are we? Integrity. Integrity. Doing the right thing, even when nobody is watching you. Respect for the work and your teammates. Timelines. How do you keep, you know, those are morals. 
How do you keep timelines? Punctuality. Are you the kind of a person who reports at 8.30 and you always have a reason, an explanation, never ending list where you just have to be late? And now it, you know, it goes on and on and on and even it comes to the church. You have to enter this, that door when the worship team are being told, we appreciate the worship team. That's all you get. You know, all the doors are closed and we are taking the Holy Communion. You know, it is a moral, it's a code that has to be a godliness. Our God is a timekeeper. He's the maker of time. But we must manage the time well at your place of work. When they are naming the employee of the year, the teacher of the year, the toyer, you know, you know, you know them. Are you ever a candidate, a nominee for that? Or they'll just think about, ah, so and so. And it becomes even worse when they put the name brother or sister before, <laughs> before your name. Brother, so I. At Ajafika, as we, as we start our meeting to nominate at Ajafika, yeah? So you can be sure you are not in the nomination list. You know, what kind of a worker are you? Your punctuality. Less leaves. Monday you took leave. Wednesday you had... Uh, <laughs> somebody was unwell. Friday in the morning. Another person is admitted, eh? That day, you know, stories, stories. It's not ethical. It doesn't please God. It doesn't please God. Are you working your salvation with fear and trembling? And get to know that we come, you know, whatever you are doing, you are doing it as unto the Lord. Praise be to God. Talk about discipline. Accomplishment. Are you accomplishing your goals? Are you the worker? Or oh, when you are left alone and the boss is away, they are confident that everything shall work well because there is a brother so and so. There is an elder so and so. There is our sister there. We are sure everything is okay. We are sure our customers shall be handled well. Even those who come fighting, we know they will be, you know, cooled down because our brother is there. Mze Kiyapi shared with us as men, you know, some of the things, you know, he went through. You would sometimes have to give up your rights to the Lord and realize I am here to represent another one, not myself. You know, being given a, a, a cool 300,000 on a morning, when your bank account probably is wailing and calling, you know, for figures. And you, you can just, you know, bend your head and say, Lord, you have called me. I let it go. You know, yeah? I let it go. That is him. I don't know about you. Hard work, responsibility, use of company resources, you know, vehicles. Equipment. And Pastor Bure was telling us that when we come to your house, you know, what logos, you know what a logo is, eh? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not talking about logo, the, the Rema word, eh? Logo, logo, you know, you find fit your system, eh? Yeah, yeah, like this one. You know, the cups, those could be honorary articles, eh? I mean, I'm a empty RH, eh? Eh? Kutukwazia uko. Kwamat. Hi. Wawa. Yeah, you love to forgive me today. <laughs> yeah. Every room. You know, there is something. Ikon. Kuna kitu ya you or he. 
kikombe sani you know kuna stepla stepla ya ofisi kwa <laughs> nyumba <laughs> ah na hizo vitu singine uh, unless you are given as honorary articles yeah just think about it you are given a, a you know a company fee i can't vile hiyo gari inaendeshwa you can tell it is not your car you can tell there is a problem you know you don't see the bumps it doesn't please god friends your motive is wrong your code your moral code is wrong you may get some blessings there but i can assure you it will be for a moment the lord expects an account excellence should be part of you know the lord the garden was excellent do you strive for excellence in what you do honesty i don't need to go to that transparency etiquette how you dress how you come to work looking like you know it means a lot it means a lot to some moro cords initiative less supervision i think that is all what we write on our cvs eh? i work under <laughs> minimum <laughs> <laughs> no the, the worship team wanasema no supervision ya mambo ya minimum minimum ni yako my sister anasema no supervision <laughs> but when you get the letter <laughs> i tell you from day one, somebody must follow you from morning mpaka jua umetoka kasi saa ngapi we have to check in that logging machine what time you left and we always realize you are leaving 5 minutes to time no supervision no supervision 10 minutes to time on monday elder malech what time did you leave you know you know you know you know it doesn't please god the lord is looking at such we may call them small but these are work ethics ethical i'm about to wind up that bit embezzlement of funds embezzlement of funds you start with one shilling <coughs> the next day five shillings the next day 5000 the next day you are in the game <coughs> and we console ourselves that will come and give the lord by the way reverend will receive that money we will receive it and pray for it We have no issue with the money and we'll use it for the kingdom. But you have an issue. You have an issue. You have an issue with your supervisor, the Holy Spirit. So even as you bring, bring, keep keep bringing. We'll use it. It's money. Elder, it's money. But at the end of the day, it's about you. It's about you. It's about you. I don't want to enter that direction because I'm sharing this message with a lot of love. That's why I'm failing to ask you about the house that you live in. About the shamba that you are already fencing. About that plot in town. About you know those things we have acquired. Do they have a clean record? Do they still have a case because of 1 2 3? It's something else if we were probably you entered a a a a a a a a a trade you are not aware that's something different I'm talking about something consciously you know we need to repent that's not the garden the lord has put us to work. gossip and rumor monger mogari you know is that how we do causing commotion organizational skills and productivity should be our ethics and finally i want to say don't lose first trust because the second trust is expensive so wherever you work whatever you do trust god that will be trustworthy theft and those kind of things allow me to continue proverbs 11:1 a false balance is an abomination to the lord but a just weight is his delight 
This is not figurative. But we can use both sides. The literal meaning of that scripture and the figurative meaning. It talks about a balance. We know the balance. That which you use. Nikama ile, you know, balance ya nyama. You know when you go to take to buy meat. Is the balance accurate? Simple questions. When you are meeting fuel to your customers, if we take that one liter and put it in there, you know, the standard liter, do we get 750 mils? That which was supposed, and because, you know, you, those are balances the Lord is watching. Those are the areas God is concerned. It's about our integrity, our ethics at work. That's our engage, brethren. That's the only way we shall influence the earth where we are. The time is short. We don't have all eternity around here. Yes, you are telling me, but you know Elder Wambua. Everybody is doing it. It's okay. You are not everybody, my sister. You are not everybody, my brother. You are not everybody. These are times of, I call it the filtration principle, whereby the Lord has allowed tolerance, the wheat and the tares to grow together. Are you a tear or the wheat? Don't expect to be slapped in the morning. Jana will live. You never, you know. And the Lord finishes with you there. No. Times of tolerance. You will still grow in that institution. Make money. But there will be a time of reckoning. A time of giving the accounts. Times of tolerance. So just exclude yourself as wheat. And continue waiting. Allow the tears to continue tearing. You are not a tear. Praise be to God. Take your position at the place of work. Take your position at the hustle. That which doesn't please the master, leave it. God has many ways of caring for us. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Our work must be honest. That explains itself. I can go on. Our work must be legitimate, conforming to the law of the land. Does what you do conform to the law of the land? Do you have a KRA, a KRA pin for what you are doing? Have you paid your 2021 tax? Have you filled the e-citizen KRA? Or you don't understand that language we are talking about? Do you have a license? Been there. Is there a license from the county? I'm a dada kasiago. Niko kukimbisa na askari, askari ya county. You close the doors. After a while, you open, and then there is somebody out there who is checking for you. Wakikuja wako wako unafunga unatoka. No, I'm just making, making it to, to, to be love, you know, something. But the, at the end of the day, are you paying your taxes? Does that business attract tax for the nation, for the country? Because we were told by senior pastor last week, we have to be patriotic. Yes. How do you feel those tax returns? Important, legitimate. Our work must not only be legitimate, but also lawful. That's conforming to the law of God. It must be lawful. A, and the question, my, my, my friends, my sisters, my brothers, I'll just ask this simple question. Whatever you do, if Jesus Christ was around physically today and is looking for a place to keep himself busy, Will he be welcome to participate in what you do? And tell you, my sister, to chape kazi leo. Will Christ be comfortable to help 
to give a helping hand in what you do. Or you will say, no, this is not our staff. This is not kingdom. You know, all simple, in another way, reverend. Will Christ buy shares in your business? Let's share the profits. You know, will Christ be comfortable to be part of your business? Simple questions. Because he is our model. Christ is our model. He's our model maker. He gives us customers. He brings them along our way. They don't just come. The Lord leads them to you. And that's why it's important every day to pray and ask God to give us guidance in our businesses. Is it lawful? <clears throat> I'll move a little bit faster because I realize we have to finish this. But the other one is beauty. Beauty. We have seen in the garden, the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. There were some trees in the garden whose primary purpose was beauty. God cre created and sprinkled nature with the beauty everywhere. By the way, if you go to Nandi, I was surprised. I walked around that area. Some of the trees we sell here, Upper Susiani, you know, you find you, a nice potted plant and you buy it at 300, 700. You go to Nandi, it's growing in the forest. Some of those, yeah, I, around Cabernet, you know, as you go around that hill, and you find flowers growing on stones. And you are like, God, you are beautiful. Beauty is, your, is who you are. That's beautiful. The question is, do you embrace beauty? Look at, look at this stage. Everything we do must create beauty. Look at this stage. We were, we were putting these plants on a stool here. But somebody has, somebody with the, you know, with the mind of God. Look at this thing. It looks beautiful. Look at this carpet. We are already done with looking at the marbles and the, 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 the whatever, which was here. They are good, yes. But we felt we can make it more attractive and beautiful, like Christ. And that's why we have this. Look at it. It looks beautiful. What am I saying? Our work must create and enhance beauty. Our work must conserve the beauty of God's creation, such as our environment, forests, and nature. I know you will not go and take a photo, you know, at a place which looks funny. You always look for a beautiful place. Is that how your compound looks like? It pleases God. Making a garden. If you don't have the skill, bring somebody with that skill and create that beautiful place. Our work must produce order, neatness, and cleanliness wherever we are. Our work must be done with a spirit of excellence. Beautiful work is an offering of worship to God. When we talk about that, as I leave that section, I remember the creative arts, Munialo, and many other friends here. Things which bring beauty. I saw Dr. Mutua Alfred. That happened to be my, my governor. Of course, before he, he came to the other side. And my governor did something. You know, when you enter Machakos, he, he, you know, flowers were planted this side of the road and the other side of the road. You know, just to create beauty. Of course, the project didn't pick because of the seasons which happened there. They were watered, watered, watered. A few are picked, but he did something. That's something you can do. Reverend, that's something you can do at your place. The last one is goodness. Goodness. Our work ought to enhance goodness and encourage sustainability. Some activities which we have engaged in are so selfish, friends, that we don't think about tomorrow. When you start mining around your one acre, two acres, unachimba shimokubwa, unasau uko na watoto. You know, selfish. And we do migodis, you know those, until some of them have become, you know, so risky. 
and covered our people. We don't think about tomorrow. What about polluting rivers? And controlled mining, killing wild animals to get the skin, you know. And some of the animals have been put into extinction. Toxic chemicals and gases into our environment, causing diseases. Pandemics like COVID. If you go to China, there is a story, and you realize that our selfishness can destroy a whole village, a whole country, the whole nation. Endemics, lifestyle diseases, and the like. Our work ought to preserve the environment and not destroy it. Is what you are doing preserving the environment. Our work ought to make other people's lives easier and better. Our work ought to be good quality and value for money. Good quality and value for money. Anything that you are doing, give it quality. So that whoever buys those products, really, it is proper. I'll not go to the market there. Sometimes we buy things. Ukifika nyumbani, ukifungua, the owner realize you got something else. It's not what you are giving money for. Yeah, our work ought to employ the best available methods, skills, and resources. We ought to have zero zero tolerance to shoddiness, shortcuts, mediocrity, and go that extra mile to give the best. Friends, what is the purpose of work as I slow down? Paul is talking to slaves. In Colossians 3, 22 to 25. It's not that Paul is encouraging slavery. But he's giving an attitude of work we should have. Sometimes our employers don't give us the right environment. We should not keep on complaining day in, day out. Agitating for our rights. Akiangu, akietu. Paul is speaking into that. He's saying... It may not be okay, but do it as unto the Lord. Praise be to God. You know, that's the advice of Paul. Don't be the worker who is pulling crowds around yourself. <coughs> telling people, the boss is taking it all. The boss is benefiting. See us bought a new car. See us bought a, a plot. Let's tools down. That does not please God. Paul is also talking to the masters, those who are the slaves. It's a culture he found. And he's telling them to treat these people well. Treat the slaves well. They are human beings. The people you've been tasked to supervise. You are a supervisor. Let it not be like those companies. I'm a supermarket. Immediately that bunch is put on you, supervisor. You know, everybody must run away when you come around. Kevin, I know you, you are a supervisor where you are. But now should everybody be elder skelter because you have just entered? That's not the way God wants it to be. You should treat those people well. And after all, the goats and the sheep issue in the Bible is all about how you treat it. It's all about how you treated these little ones. Yeah, they are the those people, Elder Maleche, you are supervising. How you treat them. How you treat them. Whether right, where the, the sheep are or the goats, it is all about read the scripture. How you treated those little ones. As I slow down, this is important. Our ethic, the Christian worker must never be lazy. Very crucial. Who is this lazy person? Idol, intolerant, slothful, inert, very inactive, loving sleep. Folding your hands to slumber. Proverbs 24, I think that three, talks about a little slumber. Folding of the hands. And poverty comes like a what? A robber. Yes. And wants. Maitaji nakuja kama nini armed men. 
Have you been there? Gas inaisha asubuhi. Token inaanza ku, 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 kupika duru. That's I'm, I'm trying to describe that scripture. You know uh, when when poverty is coming and uh, once like eh uh, masimu zinaanza kuingia. Hata wale walikuwa wamekwambia nimekupea mpaka next month wanasahau. Wanafikiria walisema this month. So they are like by the way a lot tulisema which month. Huh? And you are like what is happening? A little slumber. Don't be lazy Christians. Don't be lazy child of God. God will bless the work of your hands. Be that person who sleeps late, wakes up early. Wacha kuamka saa 4 hata kwa sababu biashara ni yako. After all, uko na you know. No, 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 no. Don't be lazy. Don't be the kind of a person when it is raining. Unasema nitapanda kesho, nitapanda kesho and when it is harvest time like now, you have nothing to put on that basket. Unless labda uende kwa mzee kiprop, kwa mzee tarus, akuweke kidogo ulete. Ah, let it come from the work of your hands. The Lord will bless. Hiyo ya tarus itabarikiwa bado tarus. Tulikuwa tulikuwa tunaenda kanisa ingine tunaambiwa kama una kitu ya kutoa ongea na mwenzako. Sasa shida. Dr. Nganga have seen you. Tawamboi. Shida ni kwamba akikupea ni yake bado. <laughs> ni yeye ametoa tu by extension amekupea tu nipelekee. So baraka yote inaenda wapi? Kwake. Yes. So come with something. Your own. Hata kama ni hizo mbili hizo tunasemanga kwa tunajiconsole kwa Bible. Eh? Those two coins, eh? Just come with that. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. Don't be dull. Don't be good for nothing. Good be good for something. The Christian work must be honest and work for an honest pay. Uh, the Christian worker must be a person of skill in their work. Skill, 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 skill. I want to come to your place, Isaac. You are not using 2020, you know, uh, production methods. And you tell me, by the way, niko na machine. I have a machine sasa yaku kweka fifungo kwa, mang- kwa manguo. Una set tu na inakuwa. You know, skill. You an earn skill. Do you see Proverbs 22:29? Do you see a man skillful in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure man. The Christian work must respect the principle of rest and creation. Find time, my brother, my sister. Don't wait until Oma inakufanya ndio unatulia nyumbani. Go out with your family. Just relax. Read books. Get a rocking chair somewhere. Yeah, prof. <laughs> Pastor Osman, eh? a rocking chair and you are just eh? for two hours. <laughs> I know somebody is telling me, Elder Wambua, <laughs> let's talk after this. Ah, but that is what we are saying. Find time out. Get a vacation. And during that holiday when you are on leave, please just relax with your family. It's godly. God rested. You will read Exodus 29 to 10. The Christian worker treats those that he has employed and supervising with dignity and respect. Deuteronomy 24:14 You shall not oppress a hard worker who is poor and needy whether he is one of your brothers or one of your sojourners who are in your land with your towns. Think about the house helps that we keep. How do we treat them? Do they feed from the same table with us? The Lord detests if we treated them otherwise. We shall not oppress them. In conclusion, our work takes up at least one third of our lives and most of our attention. We should do well to make sure that we are not overwhelmed by the amount of work we commit ourselves to accomplish. Work done to the glory of God is fulfilling work and it inspires us to serve with excellence the work that you do friends should give you a clear conscience when you come to worship the father it should not be a time of repenting every time you come before him 
You are like, you know, mimi ni kitu bure. You know that kind of a prayer. Lord, I'm useless. I've sinned against you. Now, it doesn't have to be like that. Good, doing good work. Doing that work the way the Lord wants to be done. It's already worship to him. It's already worship. It's already worship. There's this statement I'm winding up with. If the Christian faith is not relevant in the place of your work, it is not relevant at all. That's by Ken Costa. If the Christian faith is not relevant at your asshole, Lord, I think that's better understood. Then it is not relevant at all. Let's be standing this morning.